tall and corn is tasseled out. It is. It's, it's, it's that time. So. And uh, uh, it's been a beautiful summer so far, and um, the tourists will be arriving in droves again tomorrow. <laughs> Somebody said that grocery store was packed already today. I don't want to, shouldn't say anything derogatory about our local merchants, but <laughs> um, you, around here, you kind of don't get your groceries on a Friday night. Nope. Um, nope. It, can get, it can get pretty busy and congested in, in the grocery stores. Not from May to September. Um, if you joined us uh, um, last couple of weeks, I think we did, what, Eland Ears a couple, yep. couple of weeks ago? Yep. And uh, um, trying to point people in the right direction. And like, like we said when we were doing the, the Eland, a lot of times people opt to do um, bonded ear, or we yeah. call them bondo ears, or auto yeah. body putty ears. And, and in the right hands, that can be an excellent way to to do a hard to do ear liner, yeah. like maybe you don't have an ear liner for some of the African or some of the exotics. Yeah. And uh, there are people that can do um, the resin ears oh boy, yeah. very, very nicely. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people that do resin ears because they're fast and easy, and a lot of times that shows. So um, if you go a couple weeks back, you can see how we treated um, the Eland and those ears are gorgeous, gorgeous yeah, ears. Nice. Um, I always like to have customers when they come, prospective customers when they come in the shop, um, you know, they're kind of kicking tires and they, they say, what do you get for a deer head? And, and ask a few questions Well, you know they're shopping around and they probably have one hanging at home in their garage. <laughs> yes, they do. And so I try to show them what we do. Um, never run down the guy down the street, but you can um, elaborate on your methods and the one thing I like to do is I like to say look at the ears this is what you want to look for in an ear look at the edges and feel of the ears feel for drumming you all know what drumming is and that's uh you know just makes your heart sink when you get up in the morning and you come in and your ears are all drummed and you have to repair that um, so I have them look at that and and now go shop now that you know a little bit about what to look for in ears but um, so we showed you a little bit on the Eland ears, um, and last week, last week we did the elk pedestal, yeah. and um, we will be we will do a little film for that. It's going to get delivered here pretty soon. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful um, big bull elk in velvet, exceptionally nice base, um, and we'll do a little walk around. Um, That'll be fun. Probably yeah. that maybe Kate can play throughout the week before we get rid of it. Some of this stuff. Uh, that we put so much energy into, we are so proud of it that it's pretty sad to it, see it go. You know, you work on it, it for weeks and months, yeah. and and uh, you're pretty proud of it. You know, only get to see it for a few minutes finished before it goes out the door. Before the house payments do. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and uh, this week we're going to touch on something that um, every taxidermist encounters, and a lot of people don't um, like doing this, but we're talking about repairs and um, rejuvenation, you know, fixing up old mounts. And it might be a deer head, it might be a fish, it might be a bird, but some of these trophies are really special and precious to the um, yep. customer, you know, the sportsman, and it's been hanging in their cabin or in their garage or in their house for years and years and years, and it shows, um, you know, a little bit of abuse. And uh, we have here a couple of fish that that uh, have come in for repairs. And sometimes the repairs are not uh, extensive. You know, it might just be sure. that they haven't been cleaned nice and um, cleaning would be the, the first thing. And a lot of times um, you will get one that uh, needs more extensive work, like maybe, you know, fin repairs or missing scales or all kinds of different damage. So um, we're gonna touch on a little bit of those things and kind of give you an idea of um, what to say to your customers and how far can you take these fish. Um, you can make them uh, um, look almost brand new if you'd like to. Uh, Shane is wondering what form is the whitetail on behind you? Um, competitor's choice. That, um, wall that pedestal? is competitor's choice wall pedestal. We did put an XP head on that one though. With an XP head? Yep. 
and that's I, we've done that before too, changed out heads. Yeah, but we, you can look back in our archives. Yeah. A lot of people are afraid to do that, but it's very easy. Um, just put the new head on, same attitude yeah. that the old head was on, and you'll yeah. be fine. You know, yeah. but we do um, that quite quite regularly. We do it with. Um, I, I can't remember the last time we mounted a deer, for instance, without taking a Something saw to it. Something out of the box, yeah. Um, yeah, that's very We do true. it a lot. We do, we do. Yeah. Um, but <coughs> let me show you. This is a walleye. Customer brought it in, um, wants a new base for it. As I looked at it when it comes in, um, a new base will help. Mm -hmm. There's things with this fish that we can change, and there's things that we just can't change. Um, all of the fins show some pretty good abuse over the years. Um, this fish is probably about a, I'm going to say a 15-year-old fish. Um, it's got uh, lots of chips in the fins, and like we've showed you before in any of our fish mounting videos, fins aren't perfect, but they don't look like they were punched right. out with a paper punch yeah. either. So um, sometimes this is good enough for the customer and sometimes you can make them a little bit more, more realistic. But the first thing with this that I see is um, the color. The color could be enhanced quite a bit. Uh, I would definitely fix the fins. The, the top of the head has some not excellent rebuild and the bottom of the jaw has some grease leakage. A lot of this stuff the customer never even knew. He Wouldn't thought when he noticed. got this it yeah. was the best mount ever. There's some holes around the fins. Um, just a lot of little things. So you need to find out just how much he wants to put into this fish. And we'll kind of tell you the, the easiest and the fastest and will look good is just a plain old good cleaning. Yes. So yeah. with something like this, we would take this fish, um, either with an air compressor or blow or something, um, get all the dust and dirt, debris, anything that's, I mean, you're gonna have fly droppings on them, you're gonna have all kinds of stuff. This thing's been sitting around for a long time. We'd clean it up really good, and then we like to um, um, do a little, you got some yeah. acrylic fish shine. Yeah. Give me a squirt of that and we'll wash him. Let's see, paper towel. Now be careful if you're using a paper towel. I normally wouldn't use a paper towel. We like those, uh, what are they called, microfiber? Yeah. Um, yep. Go ahead and spray the whole thing. Now this is just um, fish acrylic shine, and it's meant for plastics. Now be careful with the fans, they're already not in great shape, so I don't want to hit them while I'm cleaning. So I don't need to go any farther to give you an idea. I mean, that's that's what that looks like, yeah. and that's after I blew the the brush the dust off him. Um, get him as clean as he can. Now, if you wanted to, depending on what your customer said, if he says I want a twenty-five dollar rejuvenation job, that's what that he's going to get. That's <laughs> that's about the extent of it. Um, but if he wants a, uh, you know, wants it to look a little nicer, you know. It, it just has faded over the years or something like that. Um, don't be afraid to, to get out your um, um, Perlex powders and you know, put a little metallics in it or your airbrush and you know, put some yep. nice walleye markings in this. Um, <coughs> a lot of times the belly has yellowed. You might want to um, whiten up the belly a little bit. Clean them up and then um, the gills need, need some natural color in there. And then you can gloss them just like yeah. we gloss them um, when you, uh, after you painted them, you know, a fresh fish. Sometimes I think the gloss will bead up on this slick surface. So I like to take a fine steel wool, like a double-lot steel wool, 
and just pet him. It's going to dull this shine, but you're going to put on a nice wet look gloss. And then you can use any of the, Life Tone makes a, a gloss, a semi-gloss of satin, satin I think. Um, um, Polytranspar makes a variety of glosses. Um, Createx has a water-based gloss. Um, looks like Elmer's School, and when you pour it out of the bottle, it'll scare you, but it turns crystal clear. Um, one of our favorites is um, 2K Max Clear Glamour, and this is an automotive glass, gloss. And most of our fish, when we do a batch of fish here, we gloss them with a automotive gloss. It's a high solids urethane that you put a catalyst with, um, stir it up and spray it through a big automotive cleaner. But this is the same thing in an aerosol. And it's got a, a, this red plunger up here, comes out, you put it on this nozzle underneath, it punctures the catalyst yeah. inside. You shake it up. Now you have an automotive gloss. And what it's meant for is small repairs on cars that they don't want to gloss the entire car. They need a small amount. They don't need to mix up $50 worth of gloss. Um, um, Spray Max 2000, we like it. We use it a lot. And I would give this, and then you, once you've punctured the thing, shaken it up, then it's just like an aerosol. It's got a spray. Yeah spray lid on it just like any aerosol. And if you're going over an a, a existing gloss, like I said, sometimes your um, gloss will bead up if you put it on too thick or even run. Um, it works good to give it a nice light mist. Wait till it gets tacky, which is gonna be a minute to two. I'd give it another light mist and then I'd give it a heavy one. Yeah. And that seems to keep it from running, keeping from beating up. And you can give it a heavy, nice gloss coat. What is the light stain on the spray after it has been mixed? You like to uh, tell that, go ahead. <laughs> um, I think the can will tell you 24 to 48 hours. Um, we have- That's only four days. Or even less than And what that. do these cost? 20, two days, yeah, two days. 20, Five twenty-seven, I think, twenty-five bucks maybe. So that's for one fish. That's a big waste. Um, but we have dug the can out of the garbage can five, seven days later. That we thought were no good. That we had thrown away because we were past the time and thought, oh, we've got one more thing. I wonder if that's still good. Still worked. And five to seven days isn't an eight-hour day. It's a twenty-four yeah, hour day. That's 24 so, hour day. Yeah, that's twenty-four. So yeah, we've we've pulled this out and whoa, it still sprays good. Yeah. Um, Nearly a week later, I wouldn't count on it, but yeah, um, not, that's that. not what they advertise. Yeah, um, um, but we've uh, we get a really nice high high solids. If you look at the the cans from the automotive glosses, um, we've had regular, which doesn't quite give you the nice wet look gloss that I kind of like, and uh, um, high solids is the term that they call high solids urethane, and this will give you that high solids urethane. Works good. If there's any question as to whether you're going to get a good bond with your gloss, maybe try it on the back side first. Um, give it a little shot on the back just to make sure that it's not going to beat up on you. Um, but I don't know that I've seen many reactions. Yeah, they're they're pretty rare. But as long as it seems like as long as the undercoat is dry, the top coat will adhere pretty good. So now you can see on this fish, to me sitting here, that looks. Like a whole different fish 85% already. Eighty-five <laughs> percent better than yeah. than it did when uh, we started the program here. Um, had we fixed a little bit of repairs on the fins and maybe half hours worth of you know cosmetic enhancement of um, of paint on him and a gloss, put him back on either a new setting or something, and you'd have um, a pretty impressive yeah. trophy. Yep. Yeah. Um, they can do as little or as much as and that's about as little allows. as we do we yeah. we clean things sometimes people will come in and say can I get it cleaned it might be a deer head it might be a bird and a lot of times we'll I'm not even gonna say this because they'll walk in the door <laughs> um, clean it as they wait um, but uh, you can get 
inundated with oh, repairs. Um, when you do a really nice recondition of a mount, the word spreads pretty fast and yep. people start bringing them in. Uh, if you're not charging enough for them, if you're doing this for $25, $35, you're gonna have a giant room full of repairs that you're never gonna get to. And Jerry uh, Schaefer from, I think, Madison Lake, um, Minnesota, gave us a big lecture one time about um, you have to put these type of projects in a room where you don't look at them all the time and yeah. you put a derogatory name on the door and <laughs> when it's time to do them, you pull them out. Pull but out. if you're looking at, you know, bad taxidermy work, you know, it kind of lowers yours too. But yeah. uh, anyway, that would make a pretty nice, pretty nice trophy walleye with nothing more than a cleaning. Um, you know, other than talking to you, we spent, you know, 20 minutes on this yeah. and not really, probably more like five. Yep. And what was the name and brand of that water base gloss again? The water, bla water base is 4050 um, gloss from Createx. Sorry. Pardon me? Oh. All right, now here's another one. This one is going to be more extensive. Well, now, more when the customer that. when the customer walks in, they're going to take you off guard because they're going to be carrying in. I want this bird. I want this. You know, or maybe one thing, maybe three things. Um, Sometimes you have to evaluate what you're going to do to them. I think. So, a fish like this comes in. What are you going to tell the guy? I think that's a big perch. <laughs> that is a nice perch. Um, I think it's we've mentioned it before, and you've mentioned it um, from from Jim. Um, ask the customer what their budget is, oh. kind of find out what are they thinking um, that they're going to get for it. Now, if he brings it in, drops it off, and says, "Do what it takes to make it better," we have to. We can get a reproduction, but you're um, going to get things that. I don't want to spend much on him. Can, what yeah. can you do for 15, 20 bucks? <clears throat> We're going to dust him. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're going to get a yeah. dusted fish. Yep. But sometimes they'll come in and they'll have specific things they want fixed. Um, that one there, I think they want a, there's a little separation from the backing in uh, a fin here. I think they wanted the paint redone. Um, this was, I remember when this fish came in, this was one of those conversations that went, yeah, my son took it to the guy down the road that was a little bit cheaper, and he's not very happy. Um, and that's, that's exactly where this one came from. Um, but I think that one we're going to start with cleaning it up, and I think there was some paint restoration, a little bit of fin fix-its, and uh, I think we told them okay. we'll do what we can do. <laughs> now, you can go, you mentioned earlier when we were getting ready for the show, um, we did a, we had a northern, you know, mm -hmm. maybe a eight pound northern pike or less, and uh, they kind of a special one, and and a lot of these have very, um, you know, special memories to these people. Yeah. You know, it was caught with a certain person on a certain day, or you know, so it yeah. it means something. One of the uh, my best trophies ever. I was 12 years old, and I think I showed it to people. I it was a largemouth bass that I got when I was uh, 12 years old, you know, yeah. and it's hanging right now in my garage, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, it's one of my, my favorite trophies. I didn't even do it, but it'll always be there, and I always remember that time. So they have very special meaning. Um, so you can, you can recondition these as mm -hmm. elaborate as you want, and with that northern pike that the fellow brought in, it was, it was it terrible. Yep. And the one thing it had going for it was the body shape was northernesque, northernesque. Yeah. Uh, it was it was decent. The body shape was it wasn't it wasn't lumpy, wasn't bumpy. It had a nice shape. We were able to get by an artificial northern head, right? Yep. And um, I don't have a perch yep. head, but this is a Gary Brock uh, largemouth. Yep. And. Um, exceptional, exceptional heads. If you're going to go this route, what is one of these? This probably a 
thirty dollar item least, in it. At least, yeah. yeah. Maybe a little so more. So make sure that as you're talking to the customer that this is going to get included into the price. Not only a thirty to forty dollar head, but the labor to connect it, the labor oh, yeah. to match the color, the labor to put in the eyes. Um, this all of a sudden turns into hundred and seventy five dollar yeah. head. Yeah, so that's a so big fix. as you're talking talking on what kind of recondition you're going to do. I can buy a new perch head. That would be a great idea for this fish. Yeah. Um, but remember, you're gonna, there's going to be labor putting it all together. Yeah. Then fins. These fins are okay, and they're going to, um, we can make them look nice. This one was trimmed. The bottom lobe is way off yeah. compared to the top lobe. and that that doesn't look very perchy to me. Um, the other fins, I think we can, they're situated a little funny, but we can probably okay. fix that. Sometimes it's going to be a matter of cutting the fin off and moving it just a little bit. Yeah. A lot of times they're not on center, so you know you can fix all of that stuff, but just yeah. keep in mind the labor that you're going to have to do all that. You can also buy fins. Yeah. You know, you can buy, you can go through the catalogs. Um, McKinsey has a big array of fins. Research has a large selection of fins. You know, a lot of these different companies. This is an artificial musky tail. And what you do if you use something like that is you would trace that profile possibly, cut this off, yeah. epoxy it on, not on that fish of course, but um, fix the union, just because you buy good parts to replace damaged areas, if you botch the union, mm -hmm. then we're back to what we got here. Yep, yep. So um, fins are, are a nice addition to make, that's what we did with the northern pike, we put uh, all new fins on him. Yep, Painted artificial them. head, yep. artificial fins. Um, but they still had the body, they still had yeah. the basis of that sentimental fish. And he looked pretty nice, didn't he? He looked really nice. Um, looked really and nice. this is a set of bass fins that we made. And mm -hmm. um, I think if you go back, way back in our archives, did we make it for them? I think we did on a little fish, um, didn't we? Seems like we did a crappie for them. Um, uh, but I think we showed you how to fins. make these. Yeah, I think we did and these fins for it's them. it's nothing more than a um, auto body mold auto body putty mold, two piece mold. We show you how to do it with premium bedding fiber. Mm -hmm. Great, great product for making the mold of an artificial fin. Um, I think this is probably 30, 80 resin. Yeah, yep. 30, yep. 80 um, from the clear, innovative yep, polymers inner, yeah. maybe. Yeah, um, so clear. anyway, you can make your own too if you want to. And it's kind of nice uh, if you have the time to and have good fish fins to have the molds laying around. The molds will always make a good fin. So if you happen to have a set of perch mold, perch fin molds for a size fish like that, you can make some. Yep. And it, they're fast to make, easy to make, longer and to very make the molds. Nice. Very, very nice. Um, but new fins are, are nice. Again, when you do the real fins, connecting them is key to making it look nice. Uh, ben says, you guys always have great tips. Also, what was the Createx sealer you painted on skin mounts, and do you, do you use it on reproductions too? Also, what was the sealer you used on skin mount fins? Um, yes. You had that sealer. What's the sealer yep, called? That's a 6,000. Um, it's a Createx sealer. It's 6,000 transparent sealer. And we like it. Call her. Very nice. It's yep, a nice it sealer. Really well. It's a... Uh, um, a really nice base on your fin, um, yeah. soaks into the skin. Yeah. Um, I think Gives it them. takes it, it, it's not a buildup, but it evens out your scales a little nice, Gives you a really real nice. nice surface to paint against. It's, it's we nice. like painting yeah. on that. Sprays and brushes, um, we've done both. And the gloss is a, a UV clear gloss, and the number is 4030, 4050, 4050, 40, sorry. Yeah. Uh, and Tim Gumble says, hey, Brett. <laughs> hey, Tim. Oh, that's funny. 
Um, okay, so if we were going to do this, um, it's kind of hard to work on now. He is. He is, and that's something that you never know what you're going to get for the way they're attached. You don't know. You might have a habitat that's this big that's cumbersome and hard to work around. It's nice to take them off. Now, this, this wood is a great piece of wood. I like the piece of wood. Um, it's got a little brush pile behind it. I think we can make that very cosmetically prettier. Yep. I so, think that might be a strategic brush pile back there. <laughs> it's got a big old wire back here. And if I were to dig through the hot glue and the moss, I yeah. see two big old wires. Oh, yeah. Can you hold that fish up for David, please? I could. Fresh out of the studio. <laughs> and do you want me to hold? We'll go ahead and hold that down. I'm going to see yeah. if he doesn't just come off. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, look at that. Oh, oh you got lucky, wow. Um, I can even see the color on the back of the fish is prettier oh. than the color on the front yeah. of the fish, which tells me he faded a little bit. Yeah. Um, so if you've seen us do fish before, a lot of times we take a wire and stick a wire in the body mm -hmm. and put it on a mounting stand. And I, before we started today, cut a wire that we can put in here. And if you would want to make me a hole, mm -hmm. you take that wonder. baby. And this, we're going to just keep the customer's name on it. It's going to go up on the shelf. And when that fish is ready to um, send back, we're going to get this down and see if we can't enhance this also. Now, do you, we're going to put one single wire in. Do you think I should go through that seam? I or might I hold your scales on. I'm not That's sure. What I'm thinking. Maybe I'll go right through that seam. Um, this seam has been epoxied, um, so I think I'm going to go right This is one there. of those things when something can go wrong. <laughs> it's going <laughs> to. If you see steel poking out the front side, <clears throat> maybe I'll turn it the other way. You want to face them so they can see the action? No. <laughs> no. Right. This is where soft styrofoam body, sometimes a spade bit comes out the front. Yeah, if I start bleeding, you know. Is that a dull one? No, I'm just not pushing. <laughs> there it goes. And if somebody wanted there to, you go. could have a uh, huge business of repairing taxidermy. Oh work. my, could you? We'd send you lots. <laughs> um, okay, I went in. Now a lot of times when we've been, the, no, I don't think so. I think that's just, just foam. I was going backwards with the bit just to go slow. Um, but I'm going to open that up so that you can bend your wire forward and we'll put Bondo in there. Turn it like that. Down a little bit. Maybe back. We just like to open up the interior. We've done this on some of the bodies that we carved and we've shown you when we mounted the bass and mounted the walleye. It's the same way. We're gonna put the rod in. So we've gone from several different directions. Are you hooking up the air? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There we go. Now, oops. cover your eyes. Now we have a nice open spot here for uh, the wire to go in. We can has plenty of room for Bondo, um, and we'll put it right in there. Good to go. I got lucky. I don't even have a hole in my hand. Um, now, I don't like fish that when you slam the door, they're they're going da 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 da. They're <laughs> like they're swimming. So it's nicest if you can use something 
stout enough to keep them from bouncing, but also um, thin enough that you can work with them. Yep. And I'm just going to take this and bend a, bend a little L on it. I might even do another little one. I just bent something like this. And I'll see if I can. I might not be quite that deep going forward. How okay. soft is your foam? It's pretty soft. Oh, perfect. Couldn't be better. Uh, Craig would like to know, how do you know if your paints and gloss will or won't react to what's already on the fish? I ran into situations with that. Try it on the back. There you go. That's really um, the only way to know for sure unless they can... Unless somebody can provide you a list of what was done previously, which nobody can, um, try that's a, a little safe spot out of the way on the back. That's a Murphy law. If taxidermist Murphy law, if it can react, it will react. Yeah. Um, shouldn't have too much. You can put waters over that. anything. Yep. Um, you can put oils over anything. Yeah. Lacquers are aggressive and will eat something. If they go on heavy, but usually they go on pretty light. Um, um, I think as long as most of your components or parts are dry thoroughly in between, they, they should adhere. Um, okay, I... Uh, this is Auto Body Putty. Um, it's Auto Body Master. Nope. Yeah, Auto Body Master. This is our brand of choice. But out of the can, it's too thick to mm -hmm. too thick to pour in here. We would have to, you know, force it in spatula with a spatula or something. We put polyester resin in it to make it this thin because we want to pour so it. Now it's going to pour nicely, yeah. So, um, now I have polyester resin in here, which normally would set up with MEKP, methyl ethyl ketone peroxide, uh, but this cream hardener will also do it. So we don't need two kinds of catalysts. I'm going to use the cream hardener that came with the auto body putty. And they recommend kind of like one linear inch of this per golf ball size of auto body putty, that takes too long. We're on a <laughs> time crunch here. So we'll mix it a little hotter. Now remember, if you, mix hot. it, if you mix it too hot, it will uh, weaken your auto body putty. Getting hot inside your fish. Cook him. And no marbling. Make sure you get all of the marbling out of the glass, make it nice one solid baby blue color in this instance. Now, you can get this, these catalysts in all different colors. Mm -hmm. um, we carry the one that comes with it, which is typically blue, but we also have white. And white is very good when we're doing rock work or anything that's going to show where you don't want to have to paint out a baby blue color. Yep. Yep. I might hold it and you pour it in and oh. then I'm going to coax it. You're going to make me spill it? Well, now if it gets on the back of the fish, don't worry. It's going to chip right off when it gels. And we want to fill up that void all the way. Go ahead and tip him that way once. Now, if you have too big of a void, you're just going to have a heavier fish. Ooh, I started pouring just a little too fast mm -mm. there. If you pour fast, it will, um, it will close up the hole and it won't fill. So you want to pour fairly slow. Now, what would you say we got? 
eight, nine minutes to do this? I would think so. That was a pretty aggressive little toothpaste. Catalyst, to there, do you think? <laughs> One more. Perfect. Now we're just going to let that that heap up there, and whatever um, is left on the outside of the fish after it gels, we just take a knife and, and cut it right down to the surface of the fish. I'm going to stick my wire in. Okay, and we're going to let that set up. Do you want to use some Bondo lid? Will he balance? Maybe? Nope. Uh, Michael would like to know, when, when repainting a fish, do you recommend stripping the fish or whiting it out and painting it like it was a blank? Oh, we've stripped a lot of fish. Um, we do strip fish and we use paint and varnish remover like the, mm -hmm. like the brush on kind. It's terrible on fins, so keep yeah, it off of your really fins. Yeah. It works good on the skin, and we typically will paint it, and when it blisters, scrape it off with something not sharp, but something like this spatula. Um, scrape it off into some kind of container, and we use that, uh, oh, it's citrus strip that, yeah. that is water soluble. Yeah. Um, the zip strip is really stinky stuff, so I like the water-based kind a little bit better. It's usually yeah. not so um, so smelly. And um, get it down as clean as you can. Steel wool it with the scale so you don't snag them. We've done that a lot. Yeah. Um, but whiten them out um, is, if you're a good painter, whiten them out is a fine way to go too. Then it's like painting a reproduction. Um, um, look at your gloss. If you have a super heavy gloss, it, sometimes that's when you want to strip because you won't have any texture left. But if you don't have a real heavy gloss, um, a lot of times you can get away with just painting right over top of it. No. Daniel Ooh, would like to know what more. is the best way to get started with fish taxidermy? Go fishing. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Go um, fishing. Go fishing and catch uh, lots of fish to practice on. Yeah, fish are relatively inexpensive. Um, they're not terribly difficult. Um, start with something easy: a perch, a bass. Bluegills kind of tough. I could make but. a comic book with some of the first fish that I ever <laughs> did. I did some of the most bizarre <laughs> things ever. I had a, I shouldn't even tell you this, I had a <laughs> trout one time, and I knew taxidermist used formaldehyde. That's just common knowledge, right? Every taxidermist uses formaldehyde. <laughs> so I get formaldehyde. In those days, you could have that kind of thing. And I had a jar of formaldehyde. Trout skin for a beginner, amazingly easy, <laughs> and I was able to skin and flesh this trout. I'm leaving for the night. What do I do with this whole trout skin? Taxidermists use formaldehyde. I put it in formaldehyde. It goes, trout skins are very thin, you know. It goes to the bottom of the jar, and the next day it's going to be fine because formaldehyde right, is what you smart. do. I get down in there and I pull it out, and it is like an, exactly like an accordion. You know, you could pull it and it's like a slinky, you know. <laughs> and um, so. I made a body and ready to do it. I think it's close. Okay. Keep, keep going. This is a good one. And uh, I, um, ooh, this is a little overkill for that. <laughs> that um, <one>. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that and uh, so anyway, I made a body, which I'm sure was not very trout looking. But I got it inside of the skin, but the skin went just like an accordion, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. <laughs> and I knew I needed some kind of a buffer in there, so I put plaster. 
and now I have this fish all sewn up and I didn't know what to do with it, so I put a board on top of it. That didn't help, so I put a concrete block on top of the board and I ended up with a trout that wide by that big. That looked like a slinky? No, sl slink, oh, flat. slink was gone. I, oh, I good. conquered got that the, little got this. <laughs> dilemma. That's a good way to get started when you need to buy, not only our Facebook videos, but Taxer University has mounting a smallmouth bass 101, and on the back has all the products from us that they use. I forgot that part. Jimmy. OK, now. Now, I think it's a little um, this probably it's isn't, isn't, well, it probably is. Um, it'll stay rubbery for a little bit, so don't crank on the wire yeah. too much. But right now, we have a one wire connection. Um, this is great for birds and fish and small animals, um, an excellent way to attach things. If you only have one connector, I can bend that fish this way, this way, this way. Yeah. Uh, I always show customers when they come in, you know, if you, if we didn't make your walleye feeding down at steep enough angle, all you have to do is twist it a little bit and it'll stay. So anyway, this is an excellent way to attach. But now for a stand, nothing more than a two by two, just a junk piece of plywood. We use these over and over and over. So that's why I have it laying here and why I have a hole in it. And I'm just gonna bend this wire down, like so. Once you bend the wire down, he's real sturdy. I'm gonna take a couple screws and I'm going to show you how I'll anchor this wire. I just have two screws started. I'm going to maybe Kate can get a close up of this. This is just a temporary little hold for the wires. And if you got two wires, one on each side of the two screws on each side of the wire, Screw there, screw there, and that's going to hold it. I didn't crease my wire, so when it's time to put him back on his driftwood, we're going to just pull out the screws, straighten out the wire, and we're good to go again. Yep. Now, now we can do something with this fish. He's not on a big old clumpy piece of wood, driftwood. Now I'm going to bend him down where we can work on him. I like to work on fish on the angle that he's going to be. Um, sometimes. If you need to twist him around and work on him upside down and things, we'll take this and screw it right to a mounting stand. Yep. And just that twist really it like nice. that. Um, another suggestion, um, we should probably write his name on the back. That's good. <laughs> what gauge and style of wire are you using for the attachment? This is annealed wire, and annealed wire is nice because it's maybe softer, doesn't have that galvanized coating. That spring. Uh, bends real nice. It's very strong. It doesn't have a spring. Yeah. Probably eight gauge. I think it is eight. Yes, eight. it is. Um, and you made a good point. Make sure that you uh, um, take the, the person's name. We either take it like this and we stick it under this wire back there and leave it on, or we like to take a, you're awful neat when you do it, I like it when you do it, you take that little fine Sharpie <laughs> and you write the guy's name on the back. And then when you paint and you do your glosses, if you use lacquers, a lot of times it eats your ink yeah. away. So we'll take a little piece of tape and put over that name. Yep. And you never have to wonder whose fish it is. Yes. But now, like this, look at how sturdy he is. Isn't he, you know, very nice and sturdy? Easy um, to work on. We can work yet. on fins, we can work on head, you know, we can turn him different directions and that's kind of... Yeah, he'll handle pressure from the airbrush. That's, uh, um, we can blow him off with the compressor with 
plenty of uh, compressed air. It's when we used nice. to gloss fish years and years ago, we used to hold them up by the tail and we would mm -hmm. spray them, spray them, spray them, spray them all around, set them on a waxed piece of paper, um, get another one, you know, spray yeah. them, wax piece of paper, second coat, get them out. Um, with this, he's already on a stand. Go ahead and spray him, yep. dip him up. You can get all areas of him and you don't have to worry about laying him down on something. Yes. Works real yeah, well. That works very, very well. Okay, what would you do next to this little guy? Um, depending on your customer's ask, I think I would look at, you've got him kind of brushed off. We could wipe him down and then um, I think we'd go look at some repairs. If there's any repairs that are necessary, I think there was some um, on this ticket, they wanted a fin fixed. Um, we could probably fix that fin. Um, and another, you had talked about reproduction fins. Um, another option for fixing fins that you've had for years, oh, we used sure. to do this all the time, um, might be um, to use a real fin. Gosh, I remember carting a whole bunch of fins. I think I got, that was punishment one day. I must have done something bad, but <laughs> um, we have bags full of real fins and these are invaluable. They really are. They, they make the nicest fix. Um, if we had just a little split or a couple fin rays that were missing, we could go into various sizes. These are, um, looks like we were maybe cleaning walleyes or perch or something that, that hit the fillet board. But um, there's a whole bunch of material right there that would make a really good patch if you had, um, if you were looking for just a little bit of fin material. Here's a pelvic fin um, that's probably from maybe a walleye, um, but I bet it would work great for a perch if you needed, um, if you just needed a fin or some fin material. We this always used to say really nothing, well. nothing patches a fin better than another fin. Yep, yep, and, and it's a pain to do it. It's, you have to think about it, yeah. and you have to have them already done, but once you have them and then run out of them, You'll never, never, never be without them again. They, they really do patch nice. This would be a really good example. I see it sitting here in the back of the... Um, there's a fin that I bet you could make look pretty nice just by fixing some of these, these splits right there. That would have been a long time ago. Yeah. That's Lexon on the back. That's, uh, that's something we, we still like to do from time to time. Yeah. The backing on this is Lexon. And it's uh, like the Pope Mobile's bulletproof windshield is made of Lexon. This is like paper thin Lexon. You can't tear it. It's very, very strong. Uh, but we glue it to the back of the fin for a backing with contact cement. Yeah. And contact cement, um, uh, it's like a 3M, mm -hmm. M77, is that what it's yeah. called? Yeah. Um, that's an aerosol. We get it in a a liquid okay. contact cement. So you paint the fin on the back, the Lexon on one side, let them dry, push them together. The same thing that they put for mica yeah. countertops down, laminate countertops down. But uh, with something like this, like you said, that'd be very easy for any crafty person to extend yeah, those fin we rays. could we could fix that with, we'd go oh, through sure. our little bag here and and you could pick out any of these. This, this is a, a uh, pelvic fin, but we could definitely add some fin rays to that bass and, and uh, cut them on the right shape and angle and tie them back into these fin rays. You could, you'd surprise yourself at how nice you could, a job you could do for fixing. So um, we might look at, at some fin repairs um, on that fish. Um, I don't, I don't think our ticket asked us to, but you mentioned that head. If we were going to do any fix-its to the head, we might do some repairs, some um, some epoxy work. If they yeah. if they were willing to, that's a pretty raisin sunken up head. Yeah, that you can this has never been nice. never been rebuilt, um, nor has under the jaw been rebuilt. The the gills are flared pretty wide, but. And the eyes, because the cheeks and the gill, everything's flared so much here, 
his eyes are looking up at the skylights. Yep. Um, it wouldn't, if you're going to do it and you want to make yep. it look nice, I guess I would pop those eyes out. Um, they've got flex eyes in them. Nothing wrong with the eyes. They look, they look fine, but the angle that they yeah, are is a like little that. on the yeah. funny side. Um, so we could take the eyes out. Re probably have to grind out the epoxy that they did put the eyes in with. Um, set new eyes. Yeah. Rebuild the top of the head. Mandibles are shrunken up. You could you could spend the time. Yep. And again, how much time do you want to spend on this, and how much are you getting paid? Because I think on on this fish, you could spend 20 hours. Oh yeah. Or yeah. more, and that's a whole lot of time. Yep. But it would make a nice fish. But there's that. You, you got to be able to get the most out of the effort that you put into them. Yeah. But just a just a little bit of build up here will take away that prune look. A little bit under here, um, fix the fins. A nice paint job. Yep. And put him back yep. on his base. Yep. That would that fish would come to life with a few hours of work. I don't think it would take a whole bunch. And a and nice you could coat of gloss. A, a big um, difference. We yeah. used to have uh, every few years in the showroom we'd pick out fish that of ours yeah. that we just are losing their luster. We we're pretty proud of them when we put them out yeah. there and uh, we ended up um, bringing them back in here and when we gloss a batch of fish we would clean up some of our showroom specimens and give them a new coat of gloss and yeah. man do they pop. It makes, they really yeah, look it nice. It makes a world of difference. Yeah. Yeah. So that fish is gonna take on a new life. He's got a little yeah. um, Bad paint down here, a little dark on the bottom of the pelvic fins. That'd be nice. We'll fix the holes where the wires were in the back. And uh, put as much effort into them as you want. But the more, the better he looks, the more you're going to want to do, and the more time and energy you're going to put yeah. into him. Um, really, for unless you go the head and fin route, there's not going to be any expense in what you put in, really. Yeah, it's mostly just labor, just time to make those repairs not a but if you do a $30 set of fins you know 30 40 dollar head you can e easily get maybe 75 80 dollars worth of parts into that yeah oh, but uh, I don't think we would have to and the the look of the fish already will dictate what you're going to do I think yeah. yeah that's it I think and that's it well I think we have a giveaway uh, from the last time we were live, I think it was the 14th, so a couple weeks ago. Uh, the winner for that is going to be Pat Holcomb, and we are giving away uh, all-purpose fish and acrylic shine paired with a soft cloth cleaning cloth. Congratulations, Pat, and I think he gets it with his next order. That is correct. And he had the like and share, like and share, like and share? Yes, like and share this <laughs> video to be entered in our next giveaway. So don't be afraid of fish repairs. Um, people want their trophies looking nice. They don't want to, you know, set them out on a garage sale or rummage sale. You know what my mom did with my earliest trophies? She gave them to the paper boy <laughs> for Christmas. That's uh, I remember that story. That's, that's sad. Paper boy. <laughs> Got a duck and a mallard and a bass. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, and, you know, we showed them how to do fish, but like you said in the very beginning, they could, this could be a deer, it could be a bird, and, and you can go about them the same way. Just start breaking them down and, and look back. A great grooming and a little cosmetics on it. You know what it does to people. <laughs> yes. You know, a little yeah. cosmetics can really yeah. make things pop. A good Facebook filter and mm -hmm. everything will be great. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next.